everyone, this is Katherine Larson coming to you from the Plains Museum here in Hamilton County, Nebraska. And it's that time of the year again, everyone's going back to school. And I thought today would be a good day to go way back to school and take a look at school about a hundred years ago or more. So as you can see, we have our map here in the exhibit that shows the different locations of the schoolhouses that were once dotted around Hamilton County. So yeah, where you back then you would have the 100 one-room schoolhouses. Nowadays it's more like you have the one schoolhouse with multiple rooms. So yeah, that's changed a whole lot. And of course back then you'd have the one-room schoolhouses where you had different age groups at different uh, grade levels all together um, being taught by the same teacher. One thing I also found really amusing about this old school exhibit is uh, we've got the old tablets here that, uh, or the slates, that look very much like the uh, modern tablets we have now. Um, these basically look like just the, the great grandparents of, of what we have now. And you know, you got the large screen and this one particularly amused me because it's got that hole at the top there, which I assume you like put a strap through that so you could hang it on to like uh, a bag or your wrist maybe, I don't know but um, it looks like a, a hole for a camera or something that you'd use on a tablet nowadays. So yeah, I just think it's funny that, you know, with uh, all our advancements, you know, up into the year 2020, we're kind of going back to some of the old things. You know, I think, uh, you know, the simple stuff, they, they really had it figured out where you got your pencils or your stylus, if you will, and you uh, do your sums and uh, your drawings on there and everything. So um, yeah, basically they just didn't have internet, but but yeah, but some stuff is coming back. And speaking of things coming back, I just wanted to take a moment to look at this uh, old lunch tin because um, yeah, I just think it's really stylish. You know, some of the retro stuff is coming back. So I could see something like this being used again nowadays. Though of course, um, one of the modern conveniences of uh, modern lunch pails and uh, lunch bags and stuff that I'd want is uh, the insulation so you could keep things warm or cold. Uh, yeah, this really didn't have that. It was just a simple tin. Um, but yeah, I think it's very, uh, very charming. I think it's a very vibrant reddish maroon color. Very nice. And then of course you have uh, your notification bells from back when. We're still using those now on our phones and everything, so to speak. And we've got our grammar books and our science books. It'll be it would be really interesting to crack one of those open and to see like how language has changed and uh, what uh, the advancements that we've made in science and stuff and biology to see how that would be different. And of course, you got your sports and activities and uh, yeah, things for children to play with. Um, yeah, I know this year it's been really hard to get together to play and to do any sports because of the pandemic. Um, yeah, I hope everyone's been able to get their exercise and. Yeah, for the, the Huskies, the Hawks, and the Hornets, you know, we're, we're all rooting for you. You guys can do this. We're going to make it. So one thing that's interesting to note about these uh, one-room schoolhouses is that we do have one here on the grounds of the museum. It was the uh, District 66 schoolhouse for back when. It's the one there in the middle with the, with the three kids in the front. And uh, yeah, let's go check it out. So come on in to our one room where all the students, kindergarten through eighth graders, were in the same room. And if you look at the desk, they are of many sizes for the students who are many sizes. each desk there is a pencil holder here to keep the pencil from rolling down the slanted top on the desk and there's also a hole in this desk 
and students of today would suggest that maybe that was for the water bottle or maybe for computer cables. But really, it was for a bottle of ink. The heater is burned uh, corn cobs or wood or coal. And this was our furnace. And the teacher came early to start a fire on cold days so it'd be warm when the students got here. She also carried in water for that water cooler uh, early in the morning. The teacher taught all the subjects to all the students one grade level at a time. With the charts might be used for teaching history, world history, American history, and there's several maps here to thumb through. Okay. Or science, where we start study the um, bones and the muscles and the organs in the body and they could adapt to any level of the students. With the globe, the globe has lost some of its color here but we can still see where the oceans are and the continents are some countries have changed their borders, some countries have changed their names, but here's something that we can use, and still use today, of uh, learning some geography. The blackboards with some chalk, white chalk, were used, and the students had their own individual blackboards of different sizes for the younger students and the older students. And it's very much like the whiteboards today, where you write on them, erase, write on them, erase, and you can keep doing that. Not only did the teacher teach all the subjects to all the students, but was also the music teacher. Perhaps she played the piano, or the teacher could come over here and crank up the Victrola and play a song on a record, or perhaps play the organ. Okay, the organ was perhaps also used for church services that were held in the school until a church was built. Okay, I'd like to demonstrate how the pump organ works for our students that come here on school tours. And it's just what the name says, pump organ, you have to pump. There are two pedals down at the bottom and you pump those like a bicycle to pump air back inside in a balloon. So when you push a key down, the air comes out and you have music. So while you're playing a song, you need to be, keep pumping. Now perhaps the teacher picked the shortest song to play for the students to sing, or maybe she got it started and then the students continued on with the song without the music. In the back of the room is where the students put their lunch pails. Of course in this one room school there was no lunch room. So they brought their lunches and they set them back here on the shelf. Back here where they hung their coats. And you see they have coat hooks there with their names on them. At recess time, they went outside for play some games. Maybe there was a miracle round or, or drop the handkerchief. Or there's some baseball bats, baseball glove, and baseball. There are also these uh, wheels of different sizes that they used a stick to keep them rolling down the uh, driveway or the yard at the schoolhouse. Maybe some games uh, that were played on cold days would be the Jacob's Ladder. That you could just sit here and relax and swing the Jacob's Ladder back and forth. Or 
trying to swing the ball up into the cup. It's very challenging, very challenging. But if you get it done, you just pat yourself on the back. Or tiddlywinks, where you snap the disc in the container and you get scores there. So two, three, four people can play. Keep score. The school clock, telling the time of the day for the students, not only tells the time of the day, but it also tells the day of the month. As you see the numbers one through 31 that circles the clock face. The pendulum is what runs the clock. It swings and makes gears move inside the clock and therefore the hands move. It was time to close the school in 1954. May of 1954 was perhaps an exciting day, a fun day, because it was the last day of school and families would come and they'd have a picnic. They'd have fried chicken and potato salad and ice cream, play some games, a lot of laughter and fun. But it was also a sad time because it was going to be a time to close the door of this school for the last time. This country school was built in 1874 and closed in 1954, so it was used for 80 years. It was located southwest of Aurora in Hamilton County on a farm, and the owner of the farm decided this was part of history of Hamilton County, so they donated it to the museum. So they moved it here in 1986, and we have been sharing it with the public since then. Come and visit the Plainsman Museum to learn more about the one-room schoolhouse and other artifacts that are in the museum.